man. Okay, so now can I backtrack a yeah. little bit? Okay. Yeah, so I believe with the era where Twitter came out is where the downfall actually came. I won't say of society, but I will say of social media. Because Twitter okay. may have evolved to have shorter attention spans. You can only type 140 characters to get your message across. So that means people are reading less and less and less. So even when you look at that time, articles were like this long because they want to keep you there for that time and it's gone. And what that does, it, it, it allows issues to pop up, be a thing, go viral, and then go away. Yeah. Because that same guy that had to write the code to get off of Reddit, I think it was him that brought about um, the social media addiction thing he started a program for it, and it, there was a big, big craze about it because people wanted to talk about it. But then, mm-hmm. just like everything else, it just went away. People just went back to their lives, and and that's because we don't actually value things for as long as I personally think that we should. Even things mm-hmm. like um, <sighs> shootings in schools, uh, people getting attacked by the police people dying like nothing lasts as long as i feel like it should last it's always on to the next thing what's the next challenge who's the next celebrity that messed up like it's always something happening so rapidly and so fast you don't have time to hold on to things that are actually important yeah it's hard to make change because nobody keeping at it they just move on to the next thing basically yeah yeah Yeah, that's kind of i mean i think that it not it does what am i saying I don't think that necessarily people are, everybody is moving on. I think there's still people like working on certain things in the background. Definitely. But I agree with you. It kind of messed up that it's basically like the whole world has a short attention span now. Yeah. But you have to follow the trends. You can't be writing a five paragraph page when you know people are going to read the first two lines and, and pop off. Yeah. Hmm. So what do you think are like solutions for that though? Because yes. I mean, you don't also don't want people writing like long paragraphs of BS either. I mean, I'm not saying that the paragraphs won't have any value. It's just that they have to be more succinct in what they're saying and put all the good information in the beginning or at the end. Uh, that's you know? what I was going to say actually. Yeah. So at my job, um, what we do is we have a bluff mm-hmm. and bluff is a acronym, acronym, acronym or acronym. Mm-hmm. It basically means bottom line up front, B-L-U-F. Yeah. Um, so you write the whole thing that you wrote and then up front, you might put some bullet points that basically is like a TLDR or an abstract. everything below. Yeah. Mm-hmm. So that your leadership, if you're sending it to some to leadership, they could see at a glance what they need to know. And then if they want more details, they could read the entire thing. This sounds like a resume, because that's what resumes will become as well. Yeah. And that's part but of I it. think that's a good thing because you always want to make sure that people get what you're trying to say as soon as possible mm-hmm. in case that they lose interest and don't read the rest of it. <laughs> so like you. Yeah, like me. <laughs> <laughs> I would send uh, Mino a video that I like. And like, a minute later, he's like, dude, I am bored. I'm like, the intro is still playing. <laughs> I get bored real quick. I you do. You, that's, a, that's amazing. I have to be very selective when I send you. I know, like, you're not going to be able to watch the whole thing. And you try because I send it to you. But I like, I don't want to put him through this. <laughs> I don't, so why I do know what it is, is I skim through. Mm. I might watch the beginning, be like, all right, this is boring. Let me skim through so I can at least talk to him about this because I know he's going <laughs> to probably want to talk about it. <laughs> Man. Um, do you, well, I know your, your answer already, but I'll just ask for the sake of the podcast. Do you feel like social media is a drug? I wouldn't call it a drug because when I think of drugs, I think about chemical, you know, chemical based stuff. Yeah. But I do think it's addictive for sure. Mm-hmm. And I feel like what they said in the documentary is that people right now are more fragile, more anxious, and more depressed than they've ever been before. Yep. Because like, your life is always out there. 
You always have to post the best photos, have the funniest comments. So there's a lot going on in society right now because of social media. And it only mm-hmm. takes like one bad comment, like in the documentary, one bad comment and the the good ones before this they fade away. The one comments there, the ones after mm-hmm. fade away, you just focus on this one comment. Like they say, let's say your nose is big, like hmm. And that that's all you can think of, even though everybody's like, You look so pretty, you look so nice, but that one comment is always gonna be there. Yep. In the back of your head. Yep. I mean, that won't work on me. Yeah, yeah. I yeah. grew up getting big nose jokes. My uncle used to call me jacket pocket nose, dude. I never know what I mean. You know what jacket the jackets back in the days in the eighties, nineties, they had them big pockets on the front. Yeah. Yeah. <laughs> he just said jacket pocket nose. Damn. It's like, bruh. <laughs> Nobody can top that one. That's no, alright. No. <laughs> Man. Um but what are they gonna say? From the thing, right? Mm-hmm. Where oh about kids being um having social anxiety and all these things too. They were saying that um basically kids are having unrealistic views about their own body because of social media as well. Yes. And I remember this used to be a talking point about magazines back in the day. Mm-hmm. And modeling magazines, but now is commonplace because of social media, even worse. Because whereas like Kids might see magazines that their parents buy magazines, but it wasn't as widespread because some people don't buy magazines or don't have it in the house. Mm-hmm. But now social media is everywhere. Kids using social media as early as like junior high. What do you mean? Kids? Some kids, even... kids use yeah. YouTube. YouTube is social media. YouTube. So it's like, I was talking to my wife the other day about that. Like, I don't want my kids using social media. Like, I don't even want them on YouTube. Like, I want them to just basically do things in real life and then maybe when they go to college they could start using social media and she was like that's a bit extreme i was just gonna say the same thing (laughs) and i was like and this was before i watched the documentary (laughs) oh no yeah (laughs) and now it's like yeah i knew i had a feeling that they shouldn't be doing this because even like one thing they said in documentary was the people who like worked on this, mm-hmm. they don't even allow their kids to use it because they know how dangerous it is. Yeah. yeah. And I feel like the only thing here is that parents feel like they have to go at the time. So like, if your kid is the only one in school without a phone, that's not going to be a good time for them. And it's because of the way things are set up. So now you It'll almost right. kind of have to go. You don't want to do that to them though. Because that's their mental health at stake as well. True, but it'll be all right. Because oh I remember back in the days, you know, I wasn't always the best dressed. People used to rag on me for my pants. Oh, Fian, we didn't wrangler stranglers, you know. But guess what? You learn, you grow some thick skin, you know. That's you not always going to work. I had to learn the hard way. Figure out some other way to be cool. No, I learned the hard way that you can't put yourself, you can't put your kids in your shoes. Because it's not always going to work out. Because everybody's different. I mean, I'm not saying that we should put them in situations that we know are going to be harmful to them. But I guess we have to weigh the pros and the cons. Is it better that my kid have a phone where it's going to be like distracting to them in class, where they're not going to have good interpersonal interactions because they're busy texting. You know, they're not going to actually be interacting. They're not going to learn life skills, like how to flirt with girls or guys or whatever. Mm -hmm. I feel like you have to kind of balance the pros and the cons. Like, yeah, they're going to get teased, but at least they'll have better social health. Like, that's kind of how I think about it. I understand that. I just don't want the tease it. Because there's always extremes, and I'm always afraid of the worst extremes. Like, you get teased to the point where you want to be unalive. And like that's the only fear that I have yeah, in, in this I whole situation. That. And, like, that's another part of social media. But then on the other hand... I know, you could still get... Like, you, you could, you. You could get could be bullied on social media, it. yes. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> yeah, exactly. Because so, now bullying has gone online. It's like a cage now. Like, it's just... There's no escape from social media, mm-hmm. for the most part. Because if you don't yeah. do it, then they're going to feel like they don't belong. They can get bullied for it. And then eventually, they get all those feelings that lead to what we're talking about. And you don't want that. So you want to give them at least something. But then you don't want to give them a flip phone. Because then, what's the point of giving them a flip phone? They can't do what everybody else is oh, doing. They're definitely getting a flip phone. <laughs> I want to be able to, to be there to talk to your kids, to help you talk to them out of everything. Because... 
I understand what you're doing, but they're gonna need a lot of reinforcement that you know they matter and like. There's a yeah, lot yeah, of, yeah. It's gonna be a lot of work, you know. Yeah, I don't know. I gonna. I feel like my wife is gonna kind of pull me back in the opposite direction, yeah, balance so we gonna balance out. Yeah. Yeah. Okay. okay. Cause. Yeah, she's not as extreme as I am when it make, comes to... They are flip phones now. Samsung has a flip phone now. Mm-hmm. It's a smartphone flip phone. But we're not talking really? about those. Yeah. Oh, yeah, I know you're talking about. I saw it. Yeah, yeah, yeah. So you could, like, talk to somebody and you can have the phone on top of the table. Mm-hmm. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Like, screen, screens. What do you call it? Uh, split screen. Yeah, yeah, yeah. But I think they're still going to make flip phones because I have a flip phone for work. But it's just because it's a sturdier kind of phone. Oh, another thing that we didn't talk about that we should have talked about back when we we're talking about Google is mm-hmm. how much properties they own. I know I wanted to, but we just rabbits. We just kind of we yeah, rabbits. We just kind of skimmed over it. I see a carrot. <laughs> I'm gonna chase it, dude. Google owns. Approximately two hundred and thirty-two companies. Sheesh. They have a total cost of about twenty point eight nine billion. Sheesh. And basically, whatever they can do, like internally, they just purchase the company that does it. <laughs> like, they don't even outsource. They're like, you know what? We need we need some water. Let's buy Voss. Oh God. Let's buy the whole company. You can imagine a, a regular person doing that. Like, wow, my grass looking kind of messed up. I'm going to buy a long company. Like, what? Yo. Oh, man. So that's why you own company. Go ahead. own social platforms, advertising platforms, and cybersecurity mm-hmm. companies. And that's why we brought up if Google was to be hacked or go down. Like, that's a lot of things going down. If... It's like if it was the same network that Facebook had. Mm-hmm. If Google were to go down, all of these smaller companies would also go down as well because you can't log in to employees to pay them. You can't log in to sign in. And they deal with navigation. They deal with YouTube content creators. So YouTube will go down too. Mm-hmm. Like imagine no YouTube. What would, what would all of these kids on their phones do if YouTube just went away? They would go streaming. They would go crazy. They will be They're pandemonium. TikTok. Oh. Yeah. And that, that would really be deleterious. That's it. That's it. <laughs> yeah, they're stupid dancers. Oh, golly. Golly. <laughs> I mean... Just uninstall the app, please. <laughs> and I feel like, for me, TikTok, I don't like it because of what I know it can do to me. When I do happen to go on TikTok, I'm just, I'm there. Everything is funny. Mm-hmm. But like, I, I don't do it. Like, probably, like, once a month, I'll go on TikTok and just spend, like, an hour there. Same. Yeah. But I know, so I have somebody in my life, a friend, a very close friend, uh-huh. who is addicted to TikTok. Same. And I'll be like, golly, I just hear it. This, dude, I know all the TikTok songs. And that's the worst part. It's like, you can't fall asleep with TikTok on. Please, just stop. If you're going to fall asleep, turn it off. Yes. Because <laughs> it doesn't stop ever. It is auto play. Oh man, this close close friend of mine, that would be like, <laughs> you gotta stop. You are addicted. And like, and you try to say it in the nicest way possible, you know. You're not trying to be mean, but like sometimes you just gotta be mean. Yeah. You got. You got-